I'm gonna say something controversial, which is that hard work or work is not actually hard. It's our perception of it that makes it hard. And before people chew me out, just try this sometime. And this can be in regards to anything really, like our like 95% of what we're experiencing, it might even be more, but like, let's just say 95% as an example has to do with our perception of it, our mindset. And even if we're talking about like discipline or really doing anything that's like challenging in your life, most of what's happening is you're just suffering in your head and convincing yourself that this thing is way harder than it actually is. I'll use this as an example because I think it's like a good exercise and one of the things that I'm trying to work on kind of fine tuning and like training my mind in my life is like in the sauna for example like it's so I think going in the sauna is one of the easiest ways to really view how our mind works and like how this can actually like come into play if you sit in the sauna for long enough like eventually those thoughts start coming up of like oh my gosh it's so hot in here oh my gosh I need to get out just like rapid fire like our mind is convincing ourselves that it's a lot worse than it actually is because when you really kind of detach from those thoughts and like watch yourself from like an outside sort of observer perspective like it's not actually that hot you know what I mean like you might be sweating and it might be a little bit uncomfortable but what's truly uncomfortable is like all your resistance towards this thing you know what I mean and I in my experience like that practice in and of itself has been like extremely liberating because like if we if we're not conscious enough to watch those thoughts and observe them from a detached perspective they'll govern us you know what I mean we'll always be subject to that chatter to that neurosis but once we can actually detach and take like almost like like I said like an elevated perspective and like kind of look down on ourselves almost and like observe those thoughts observe the things that are happening in the mind we realize that we actually have a lot of that's actually where we become autonomous instead of just being programmed by the machine and by you know our thoughts I really practice this in a multitude of areas in our life and I think like I think work particularly can be another area that we can start exercising this and actually become aware of like not only what we're doing and what's happening, but become observant of like what our thoughts are saying and like how they could be influencing, you know, the situation that we're dealing with and how they could probably actually be making things a lot worse because when we, our mind likes to complain, you know what I mean? It likes to go to negative places. And I definitely think that's something we can change because if you can reprogram your mind, you can have positive thoughts more automatically, but it does take time and intention and discipline to build up that positive momentum. But I think we can get to a place where it happens very automatically. And I've been in that point in my life a multitude of times. And then, you know, I think if we're not conscious of it, just because of how much like negativity we're bombarded with and just like our the survivalistic tendency of humanity in general like it it's trying to help us you know what i mean it's trying to get out of situations that maybe we don't want to be in our mind is trying to make things as easy as possible for us so i think we have to be you know thankful for that but like i said if we're not aware of it then we really don't have any autonomy or power in our life we're just governed by the program whatever that happens to be so for example i think work is another big area that we can see this like i've definitely experienced this in my own life I'm not saying you have to love the job that you're in, but I am saying that you have a lot more control over how you're actually feeling about it and therefore your energy within the job. And it's ironic because if we talk about manifestation, the way to actually get a job that you love is to love the job that you have. And I know that sounds kind of counterintuitive because it's like, well, I don't want to love the job that I have. I want to, <laughs> I want to get a different job. But the energy of the version of you who has the job that they love, loves the job that they have. So you have to match that frequency in order to, you know, love what you're doing and to be in a career that is actually fulfilling to you. And the way to do that, to wait, the way to hack that, to get the mirror of reality to reflect something different back to you is that you have to figure out how to embody a, the, the state of a person who actually loves what they're doing. You know what I mean? And I think we have this conception too, that we just want to be free and have all the money in the world and sit around and do nothing and I'm not saying I've like won the lottery or like been in this position but I've been in positions where my finances were taken care of and I didn't have a job that I had to be in regularly so I, I was in a position where I had money and I had freedom um, and in both of those experiences I had no purpose and let me tell you from both of those experiences the key takeaway that I learned is that 
it's not fulfilling to just have a bunch of money and a bunch of freedom without any purpose. Like point being that like you don't want to just sit around and rot away and do nothing. You might think that's what you want because maybe you're in a position where you don't have any freedom and you don't have the ability to do that. So that's what you, th it's kind of what our survivalistic mind sort of think thinks we want um, because from a survivalistic standpoint, like that would mean we're doing good. We're not expending energy. We are able to be lazy. We're able just to do nothing. But in reality, um, that's not actually what you want to do like most of the time. And in fact, it actually leads to your downfall mentally and physically because we do want to create. We do want to have purpose. We do want to provide. We want to um, pro we want to be of service. We want to provide value. That's what makes us feel whole and purposeful. That's not to say that we don't also want the freedom and flexibility to be able to do what you want. And perhaps that is just nothing and like rotting and like, you know, just doing pleasurable things now and then. If we're talking about a life of true fulfillment. It's not, that's not genuinely what you want. You want something, you don't want to do nothing. You just want to be able to actually love what you do. So in order to get to a position where you are financially free and getting paid to actually do what you love in that position work wouldn't feel like work it would feel like your passion it would be the thing that you love it would be the thing that you enjoy and that's what true freedom is is not feeling like you're working and getting paid for it it's not that you're not providing value it's not that you just have a lump sum of money and you just get to you know do whatever you want that could be the case but nine times out of ten it means that you're getting paid to be the person that you love to be and do the thing that you love to do like that's that's what true freedom is that's what true you know, financial independences in my experience, in order to get to that place, like I said, we have to embody the energy of being someone who doesn't feel like work is work. And in order to do that, what we have to do is shift our mindset to actually love whatever it is we're doing. You know what I mean? Even if that's not the thing that you do inherently love, maybe you're working in a nine to five job that you don't like, and you want to be, you know, a full-time content creator, or you want to, um, you know, work with animals, or you want to be a full-time artist, whatever it is that you want to do, we have to find a way to close that gap. And being aware of your thoughts and aware that in changing the perception that work is hard is the key to doing this. It does require a higher level of awareness and actually catching yourself and, and making those shifts. But to boil things down, what we have to do is change the perception of what work is. And how we do that is by getting excited about whatever it is we're doing. And there's so many, there's so many ways that you can do this that we probably don't even realize because I think it's it's so easy for us to get up and be like, oh my gosh, like I hate this nine to five job. Like I don't want to go into work. Like I have to deal with all these clients I don't like. I don't get paid enough. Like it's so easy for us to go there and to focus on those things. And this is going to take some intentionality, but I promise you it's going to be worth it. Find the things that you like about your job. And it might be hard at first, but every single day, just show up and write a couple of things that you like about your job. And it's going to get easier and easier as you start doing this. At first, it might be hard because if you if your mind has been so focused on like the negative and like that's where you've been putting your energy, there's momentum going on those thoughts. So those are the things that are naturally going to have the most power. But just do a little of this every single day and throughout the day, you're going to subconsciously start to notice more things that you like. And what happens is when you notice, when you notice something, you start creating more of it. You start noticing more of it. So that over time, that's slowly going to snowball and eventually you're going to be in a point where you actually like your job and you actually feel good getting to show up and getting to be of service and and when you do that, when you start actually loving your job and getting excited about it, it actually becomes easier. And a lot of times there's actually less on your plate and a little bit less to do. It's like almost it's almost like when you when you're happy about something, it's 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 it just puts you in a different frequency. It puts you in a different energy and I've been in so I worked in client facing for a number of years and I've been on the side of things where I hated my job. I was very negative, um, very unhappy with the situations I was in. Um, and then I've also been on the flip side where I was so grateful to be working there. I was finding the value in what I was doing. It felt exhilarating to solve problems and work with people and, you know, have conversations and get to learn things. And I'll just let you take a guess. Which version, which mindset do you think got... Had 
easier work experiences, had easier clients, had better people assigned to the accounts, had more success and how the accounts were doing, had more fun, had easier jobs. I mean, like night and day, a totally different experience and nothing was different other than my perception of the job that I was actually doing. So if you can find little things every day, just little things that you like, you know, maybe there's a certain person that you enjoy working with and, or maybe there's a certain meeting you get to go into and it's, there's things you like about it. There's things you get to, maybe there's a person that you work with that you learn from and you're getting value from that experience. Anything that you can find that you can take value and maybe, you know, maybe just the fact that this is something you get to put on your resume and get to, you know, draw experience from is beneficial. Be creative with this and really try to find like anything that you can be excited about because like at the end of the day, like this is like, it's, it's kind of like a video game. Like you're in a video game. You know what I mean? Like your sim right now is in a job that maybe you don't like. And in order for that sim to get a different job, they have to be happy in this job and find joy in it and find play in it. Like you're playing a game. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't have to like try to find any way to sort of lighten the heaviness we put on work um, because it's going to make it infinitely easier. Like treat your job like a game. And part of that game is to actually have fun in playing the game. Like anything you can do to shift that mindset is going to help you significantly. I'm telling you, it's going to totally change the game for you. So for example, like if you say you're in... I don't know, say you're an office manager or an administrator, um, maybe you're in business, but you want to be a full-time artist, like, they're, like, focus on the fact that maybe you're learning skills that you can actually use in your art business, like, when you're a full-time artist, you know what I mean? Like, maybe you're learning, like, data entry or SEO or, um, you know, just or overall organization, like, Google Suite, whatever it is, like, get excited that you can actually pull on those experiences and, and use those in your future art business or in the art business that you're doing on the side or what what have you. You know what I mean? Like there's always something that you're learning in your current experience and your current role that you can be grateful for and you can be excited about. And know that like this isn't always going to be the case either. Like this is a chapter in your life. And one day there will be a point where you'll look back on this job and say and, you know, be kind of grateful for it and be kind of happy for it because there were things that you learned. There will be a point where you are truly in your dream job or your dream career, you're financially independent and you'll look back on this. So you don't have to, so try to just enjoy it and like relish in this chapter that you're in because I've had jobs that I really didn't enjoy while I was doing, but looking back, I'm so happy for that experience. And I wish I would have, you know, just kind of relished in a little bit more and really enjoyed that experience because there was something to be learned in every single job that I had, even though it wasn't like my dream job. Like it's, it's part of the evolution of who you are and it's ultimately part of what's going to bring you to your ultimate dream job, to whatever it is that, you know, it makes you you, that your purpose in the world, you know, getting paid to do what you love, like whatever that is. I think I think one of the biggest keys to switching this, like not only just finding general things that you appreciate and that you love and that you're getting out of the experience, but also just the just the joy of being of service. And I think this isn't always, it depends on the person, but I think this can be something that we don't really focus on. Like we almost feel like we don't, we're not really wired, we're not really set up to be of service predominantly in this world. And maybe that's not entirely true, but I guess just if, if we think about like, we're always consuming in the Western world, you know what I mean? Like we're always on social media, we're um, watching TV, we're eating, like it's like every time we feel that void, that hollowness, it's like consume, you know what I mean? Like that's sort of the mode of operation. There's actually so much fulfillment in being of service and actually producing and actually expending. And I think sometimes we're resistant to doing that because we feel like oh like work is hard like work is work but like pay attention to how good it actually feels to be of service and to be of value and if you've been in a mindset where maybe you're reluctant to serve you might not even get the recognition that you're looking for and I think that can be frustrating and make you feel like you're not truly of value but try to shift your perception regardless of if anyone else notice notices pay attention to the value that you're providing you know what I mean and be proud of yourself for that. Like pat yourself on the back, like feel good that you are showing up and you're able to, you know, help this organization run or just bring a smile to someone's face in your workplace today or get to serve someone, you know, like a burrito or whatever it is you do. I used to work at a burrito, I used to manage a burrito shop in New Orleans and 
I genuinely got so much joy from that job. You know what I mean? And there were other people there that hated coming in. They just hated their job. They didn't want to be there. You know what I mean? But I was in a point where I was 20 years old. I moved down there and I was just happy to have something to be able to, that allowed me to basically support myself to live, to live there. You know what I mean? Like I, I just felt grateful for the opportunity and I genuinely enjoyed customer service and I genuinely enjoyed serving because yes, there were problematic people, but like, it just felt good to be able to be of service and to be able to, you know, be involved in the exchange of commerce to give someone something people were excited they're excited to eat lunch i got to you know serve people food like it was exciting to be involved in that experience you know what i mean and i i get that that's usually not like a common perspective that people have but i'm telling you if you can adopt this and really like find value and being able to be of service and just engage with people and you know really just view it as play and make it as light and fun as possible like your not only is your whole job going to change but people are going to be like doors are going to be opening for you like opportunities will come to you because whenever i'm in that mindset like that's when my like previously like my career has accelerated massively like like you're just magnetic like things get easier you get more done um you line up with better people you line up with better customers you know management notices you um other people want to hire you it just you it puts you in a whole separate paradigm you know what i mean and that over time is going to snowball and it's going to lead you to a place where you are literally just showing up as your natural self and you're just happy to serve and provide value and you are getting paid for it and that is true financial freedom that's true abundance but we have to make that shift first and that really just starts with awareness and you know making those subtle tweaks day over day so i hope this was helpful i love you so much i hope you tune in next time Bye bye